It's time for a Halloween edition of the Taco Truck Roundup, the show where I tell you about everything that's new at AppSumo. My name is Dave Swift, and every week I go through as many lifetime deals as I can handle. I click every button, I go through every menu item so I can give you the most complete reviews of AppSumo lifetime deals anywhere on the internet. We've got five brand new tools this week, so let's jump right into it with the first tool, Paper Guide. Paper Guide is an AI powered research assistant. Basically the way this works is you can load in your references, whether they're documents that you have around the web, PDFs that you want to upload, or you can even search for references right inside of Paper Guide. Then you can engage with those documents. You can highlight them and take notes. You can do screenshots of important images and leave notes on that. And most powerfully, you can engage with AI to chat about the document, have it summarize what the document's about, ask it questions, and all of this is perfectly tailored to research academic type purposes. This is not just another PDF chat with GPT style tool. This is really hardcore geared towards researchers, people working on their PhDs, scientists. That's who will really appreciate the power of Paper Guide. Now, if you wanna know more about Paper Guide, I've got a full length video I released just yesterday. So definitely go check that out. It's about 15, 20 minutes long and it goes through every single feature. But I will say there was only a couple of downsides to using Paper Guide that I ran into. One of them was around the file size limits. I tried to upload a large PDF, I think it was about 180 megabytes and I got an error, but all of the smaller regular size PDFs, those worked just fine. Everything else about Paper Guide was a breeze to use. It was very simple to understand and yeah, I enjoyed it very much. Heading to the comments, we've got Jim Samples 7069 who says, can this analyze any URL and learn it to then chat and create content around that URL? And I'd say, no, it can't. It's really geared towards those academic scientific researcher types. So if you're not that, this is not the tool for you most likely. If you put in just a random article, you know, you grab some kind of news story off the web, it'll know the URL and it'll be able to, you know, read the title, but it's not necessarily going to be able to grab the text if it's not in the right format. So yeah, keep in mind, this is really geared seriously towards research, not just a general GPT type tool. Ayala5280 says, did you try the AI writer content humanizer? And if so, did it work well? Yes, I did. It was not included in the full length review, but when I tried it out, it was a little meh, to be honest. It still felt very much like AI wrote the content. So yeah, I don't think we've got a truly amazing humanizer yet in any product that I know of. I think some of the outputs you can get from Claude, if you give it the right prompt, can be absolutely stunning, but you still need to read it and make sure that it doesn't sound too AI. And finally, we've got Anderson Curry Jr. here chiming in to clarify the use case for this tool. He says, this is geared heavily towards those of us working on bachelor, master's, or doctorate degree papers. APA style writing citations is the base writing standard for many academic papers. Also, APA plagiarism could be something as simple as Dave Swift stated the following, this tool is very cool, versus Swift, and then parentheses, 2024, stated the following, this tool is very cool. In APA writing, the first example is considered plagiarism. I'm not saying this can't be used for other use cases, but it is highly geared towards academic use, and I totally agree. It's one of the regrets after I published the video is that I didn't state upfront that I am not an academic researcher, so I might get a few things less than accurate. So don't haul me over the coals on this one. I am genuinely very excited about the technology. However, as a non-academic, non-scientific researcher, I don't have any genuine use for this particular tool. I wanted to demonstrate it for those who were curious and possibly could make some use out of it. So all that said, I ended up giving Paper Guide a 7.9 out of 10. Let's move on to our second tool of the week, Index Guru. Index Guru is an SEO indexing tool that utilizes Google Search Console. The way it works is essentially you give it the URL or it can actually find the URL of your sitemap and then periodically, like daily, it will go through and check for any new URLs and then it'll automatically report those over to Google Search Console. This is not a brand new concept. In fact, I've reviewed two other tools that do essentially this same thing. However, I did like Index Guru's setup process. It was very smooth and easy. It also does some basic site speed tracking and a few other little SEO metrics that might be helpful or at least informative to those who are just getting started on their SEO journey. 
On the downside, the tool is limited to just 200 URLs per day. Some of the other tools that I reviewed did increase that number, especially as you bought a higher and higher plan on AppSumo. The main concern with Index Guru, however, is the way that it's actually indexing your website via the Google Search Console API. Apparently, this is not something that Google wants you to do. It really only wants you to use that particular API for certain use cases. It doesn't fall under just general scraping and updating of your website. So there's a lot of concern about the long-term viability or even the immediate functionality of this tool actually working. The responses that we saw on AppSumo to these types of questions didn't really fully address the issue, instead emphasizing the fact that, well, the tool had properly reported the updated site to Google and whether or not Google decided to actually index them and then display them on search results, well, that was up to Google. And I guess that's accurate, but it doesn't really get to the point of, is this violating Google's terms? And you know, I'd love to hear from the developer of the tool and state like very clearly, yeah, we think this is legit. It's not gonna hurt anything if you use our tool. So we didn't get that clear of an answer, which makes me feel a little bit uneasy. Tobias Burkhart 7602 says basically the same thing. He says, thanks for the review. I was about to ask the same thing you mentioned at the end that was about the indexing. Is this tool violating Google's rules or not? And just like you, I found the answers of the founder to this legitimate question to be a bit unsatisfying. So we are in agreement there, Tobias. Botafax says, I was not able to do its work. I used it, but did not get any results. Maybe it's against Google policy. And my response here is, how long did you give it? So if you just picked this up when it came out on AppSumo and you didn't immediately see your sites being indexed, that can be okay, especially if it's a newer site that Google wasn't already indexing anything. Sometimes these things take a few days or even weeks. You know, it could be longer with SEO. So give it a chance. I would say that's not definitive proof that it doesn't work. However, I would like some definitive proof that it does work and that we're not violating any policies here. So all of that said, I still think this was a decent tool. It's probably just not the one that I would recommend most people pick up. The others that I've reviewed more recently, I think were a little bit better. That was Warp Index and URL Monitor. Now, both of those are off AppSumo, so you can't get those right now, but maybe they'll come back in the future and knock on wood that they've got a better answer to the whole API question. All right, so in conclusion, I gave Index Guru a 5.9 out of 10. Next up is DMARC Report. This is an email authentication tool. And if you don't wanna watch any of my full length videos on this Taco Truck Roundup, I understand that, but this is one I really spent a lot of time thinking about how to explain email authentication in. So if you're curious about email authentication, definitely watch that full length video. I'll help you understand what DMARC is, SPF, DKIM, and all of that email gobbledygook that no one really seems to understand that's not an absolute email technician. But in summary, what DMARC report is going to do is get you set up with all of those authentication tools I just mentioned, and then allow you to monitor what's actually going on with emails that go out from your account. If you wanna use this tool for client management, there's some good team management features. You've got embeddable widgets. So if you've got like a client reporting dashboard, you can make some widgets right inside of DMARC report, put them on the dashboard. The client will never even have to log into an additional service. I really like that. You can also customize the type of alerts or email notifications you might get in case something is going wrong with your email. You'd wanna know about that right away. And if you are an agency serving clients, you'll be happy to know that this tool is completely white labelable. So you can completely put it to your own brand, give it your own domain name, and people can sign in and use it as a service that you might be reselling. Andrew J. Lee one says, I'll be getting a code or two from your link for sure. I had a little trouble with the setup, but it makes a bit more sense now. Thanks again. I'm glad I made a slight difference. Let me know if you have any questions about getting set up with DMARC report or email authentication in general. I'd be happy to help out. And Brad Slavin 4515 chimed in. He's actually the founder of DMARC report saying, thanks for the great review, Dave. Really appreciate having a technical expert like you dive into our product. It's clear this wasn't just another affiliate video. Your focus on explaining the technical side and setting expectations for setup makes this an incredibly valuable video for users looking to get the most out of DMARC report and DMARC in general. Kudos. So thanks for that, Brad. Very, very nice comment. I always like when the founders end up watching my videos, although sometimes it makes me uneasy because you know, I'm not always like the nicest about every product. So it's nice when a founder watches a video where I actually enjoy the product.
So let's wrap things up on DMARC Report on that positive note. I ended up giving DMARC Report an 8.1 out of 10. I recommend just about everybody doing email on the internet has a tool like DMARC Report in their tool bag. So definitely go check it out before it leaves AppSumo. Up next is Build. This is a pretty complete financial tool allowing you to do invoicing, time tracking, estimates, and even expense tracking. Now, later on, they say they're gonna be adding in full-blown accounting, but that is not there yet. The overall setup process is very simple. They've got a little wizard for you to go through. You connect up your payment processor, something like Stripe, Molly, or PayPal, and then you can begin sending off invoices. When you create an invoice, you can do recurring invoices, which is, I'm saying that very particularly because someone was mad, I called it reoccurring invoices. We'll talk about that later. Then we've also got customizable fields, so you can add you know, your own custom fields if there's particular data points you need to get from customers when they sign up or maybe when you're creating an invoice, you can customize that to be however you like. You can also manage multiple businesses from a single build account. So if you have multiple businesses yourself or maybe you want to resell this to your customers, you could definitely do that as well. The only downside is that they have a limit on how many users you can have per account. So even if you maybe don't maximize your overall number of accounts that you're using, if you resell this to a larger business that wants lots of access, they could chew up all of your users. The only real downside I saw in Build was when loading the invoice on the front end, like let's say you send a link to pay an invoice and then your user clicks on that link, it took a bit for it to load, like an uncomfortably long amount of time where each button would kind of load maybe two or three seconds apart and then eventually your logo would show up and then they could make the payment. They could just fix that loading time, which seems like it should be a solvable problem. They'd have a real monster of a tool on their hands. Justin Sturgis chimed in on the comment section saying, I really wanted to love this the first time around. So to clarify, Build has been on AppSumo previously. This is their second time. I ended up refunding because the Build team was unsettlingly ambiguous about white label and CNAME. They committed to developing it, but were very vague about whether LTD accounts would get access to those features at no additional cost. If they're vague, it means no. <laughs> That's what I've come to learn uh, buying lifetime deals for darn near a decade at this point. It might not have been a deal breaker for many, but for people like me, uh, this tool, it's an absolute deal breaker. So it doesn't look like they'll have, they have added any CNAME at all, even though it was promised by the founder back in February. Yeah, I didn't notice CNAME when I was reviewing the tool. It really wasn't something that I was thinking was uber important because it's not important to me, but I understand that not everyone has the same priorities here. Justin goes on to mention that back when it was first launched, it had unlimited users on all tiers, no storage limit and custom SMTP for each workspace. I think it still has custom SMTP for each workspace. That's not a, a site-wide thing, I don't think. Uh, and not sure any of those are the same this time around. So it is true that there's a limit on users. There is also a storage limit, I believe. No, I take that back. There is no mention of any storage limit. Really, the only files you'd necessarily be loading onto build are gonna be things like PDFs or you know other small attachments that would be relevant to the actual invoice. It's not like you're using it to share uploads or something like that. That's not the point of the product. It's not to sell digital products. It's really just for invoicing and other documents related to the invoice, like maybe a purchase order. Justin also mentions that the top tier the first time around was priced at $4.99. Whereas the top tier this time around is $6.99. Yeah, so a little bump up in price, but you're also getting some additional features here that weren't available the first time around, namely unlimited AI assistant. That's a new feature for them and they're not putting any cap on that. So I could see how that would be uh, maybe a little bit expensive for the founders. They probably wanna ensure that they've got enough investment to cover that usage. Justin's very positive and professional about this though. He says, I don't begrudge the changes as it's good to see a product evolve and increase their value and subsequently their pricing, but still no CNAME even after a significant price per user increase is disappointing. Gra glad I grabbed Moxie. All right, very cool. Uh, yeah, I appreciate all that feedback, Justin. Sounds like you have given this a thorough look, so your input is definitely very valuable. And the last comment on this video is from RGD247. I love you, Dave, I do. Your reviews are always spot on, but please it's pronounced recurring, not reoccurring. And my response to that is, oh boy. So one, reoccurring and recurring are both words. They both mean similar, but different things. 
but also who cares? Like it's a YouTube video. I can't imagine taking the time to correct a word inside of a YouTube video, especially one that's so close. I love you too, RGD247, but just let some things roll off because it really doesn't matter. And here it is, if we need proof, the Merriam-Webster dictionary, reoccur is a verb and it means to happen another time. So is it really worth commenting and trying to ruin my day on YouTube? All right, rat hole closed. I ended up giving Build a 7.6 out of 10. Our next tool this week is called Maximize AI. And this is a website visitor identification and chat tool. Basically the primary feature that they build on the AppSumo sales page is that this tool will allow you to put a little script on your website. And then when anonymous visitors hit your website, it's gonna do its best to try to identify them. So you could do some cold outreach and maybe try to engage them and sell them your products or services. Now in practice, I really struggled to get this tool to identify much of anybody. I had it on my site for only a few days. We got about 2000 uh, page views in that time and it really only identified two different identities. It didn't give me specific personalities. It only gave me general companies and they ended up being bots from other, I think they were bots. They were like agencies from Russia and I forget where the other company was from, Malaysia or something like that. It wasn't ideal customers for me, so I wasn't you know, too terribly excited about it. There's just a lot of mystery around this tool. Like why was it able to identify those two companies but not anybody else. Like what is the giveaway? Were they not using a VPN or I'm just curious how it, the underlying technology actually functions. Now the other side of Maximize is an AI chatbot. And this was a pretty compelling but odd add-on. It really felt kind of out of place when you're thinking about identifying you know, anonymous contacts and then, oh yeah, we also have an AI chatbot. The chatbot itself wasn't terrible. The way it works is you enter in your URL and then it goes to your homepage and learns a little bit about your company and then creates a value proposition and kind of a selling strategy. You can choose different types of strategies that are based on popular influencers like Simon Sinek and Alex Hermosi and Russell Brunson, your type of sales approach, and then your chatbot will be trained in that capacity. You can also go in and add your sitemap and it'll just scrape the first 50 pages on your website that it finds on the sitemap. You couldn't specify like specific URLs or maybe, you know, like what I wanted to do was maybe block categories of content that wouldn't necessarily be related to sales. So you couldn't do that. But if you wanted to be more specific, you could, you know, one by one go through and copy and paste all of your services and then it will train the chatbot on that data. Now, while I was recording the video, I let it run for about 30 minutes and it never actually completed the training data on the URLs that it scraped, but I'm happy to report that after about a day or so, it did eventually learn all of that data and now the chatbot is trained and should be functional on my existing content. Now, every AppSumo plan also includes video calling minutes, which is a little peculiar. Again, we're kind of putting all of these strange features together and calling it a product, but the way the video calling feature works is if a visitor is on your website and then they start chatting with the chatbot and you as a human are around and happen to see that they're chatting with the chatbot, you can jump in as a user. You can write back, you know, just text messages and you can even initiate a video call so that they can do a little kind of mini zoom right there on your website. Now that's really cool idea, but the implementation just needs work because there's no way for the user themselves to request the call. Uh, you, they have to do it from, you know, the, the user, like you as the administrator have to initiate the call, which is just a little bit awkward. Like if, imagine if you're just on some company's website and then they start calling you, it, it feels like an overreach in my opinion. Not only do they call you, but they video call you. I mean, you could be in your pajamas or something and not really want to take a video call. To top it off, the buttons to get the video call to go away, like if you wanted to reject it, those were non-responsive in my testing. I actually had to open up the chat again in order to accept or decline the call. So very unintuitive and just kind of that finishing polish was not there. Team Insights 7611 says, in a nutshell, it's trash. Not sure why AppSumo allows tools that are not ready for the market on their platform and also that is exorbitantly priced. Due diligence should have taken place. My response to this is, hey AppSumo, I'm available. I can test every tool that you put out on your marketplace and even create training for stuff before it goes online. 
let's talk. We can make something happen here. In conclusion, I ended up giving Maximize AI a 3.9 out of 10. If you want to see more, go ahead and check out my full length video. I've got it linked in the description. That's all the tools for this week, but I've got a fresh crop of LTDs set for review. My next release will be out tomorrow and it's going to be Charge Keep. So get subscribed for that one. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single LTD review. Leave me a comment for the algorithm. Say, hey, what's up? Or let me know if you like these roundup style videos. My name's Dave. Head over to clientamp.com, get signed up for the free email newsletter, and I'll see you in the next review.